Today I have with me David Meerman Scott, blogger, author, and professional speaker, uh, here to teach us lessons about a lot of different things. David, welcome. Hey, Tom. Good to be here. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I want to back up for a second right away because um, I went over that quickly, but uh, you're a, a, a popular blogger in the marketing space, but you're an also, also an eight-time best-selling author of traditional books and a professional speaker who works the circuit quite regularly and literally around the globe. And one of the things I like from your uh, bio you have up on your site is uh, recovering uh, corporate marketing VP from two publicly traded companies. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, so just to be accurate, I've written eight books. Three of them are international bestsellers. Um, so uh, I don't want, I, I wish I had eight bestsellers, but I, I've written, I've, I've got three. You know, it wouldn't be hard for me to believe, but uh, thanks for, for the clarification. And one of them that I'm very familiar with, of course, is the new rules of marketing and PR. Uh, as you know, I teach an e-marketing class over at Bentley University, and that's the base book that I used for that class, like, like um, uh, many, many other uh, folks who teach uh, similar classes do. And uh, th thanks for coming on to talk to CIOs and IT leaders because, you know, there's a, there's a convergence in the marketing and IT world these days that's uh, no longer ignorable. Um, and I think that you can add a lot of uh, perspective for this. So yeah. if you could help us set the stage just a, a minute about your background because, you, you know, I think it's really interesting how you come from corporate marketing, uh, but you you know, uh, you were kind of a trailblazer and, and moved out of that world, but now you're back in teaching those folks uh, kind of how to do all this stuff. So maybe give us a, a couple of minutes sure. on that. Yeah, so my first job was on a bond trading desk. Um, I, I worked at um, Dean Witter in New York City on a bond desk. And so I was using real-time technology. I mean, this is really sophisticated stuff. Um, we had real-time information in the 80s. And, um, and then I, I spent um, 10 years in Asia. Most of that time was with Knight Ritter, at the time the largest newspaper, second largest newspaper company in the United States. And I was their Asia marketing director. So again, I was focused on technology, marketing of technology. Moved back to the U.S. in 1995. And I was vice president of marketing for a company called News Edge Corporation, um, technology company traded on NASDAQ. Uh, so I've been in the center of, of this world of real-time information, essentially my entire career. And, um, and then uh, since 2002, I've been on my own, um, you know, writing and speaking about uh, the ideas of how marketing has changed. And what I basically did was I applied everything I learned for my entire career since the 80s around real-time information and basically realized that Marketing is just simply publishing information in real time. That's what it's about. It's it's about writing that blog post, doing that YouTube busy video, um, doing an Instagram um, uh, photo, um, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, white, uh, putting white papers or ebooks out there. And, um, and a lot of people just make it out to be a lot harder than it is. It's mm. not really very hard. It's just a matter of uh, basically all all you need to do to market you personally or your business is to think like a publisher. Yeah, and I think that's what makes your book, uh, and The New Rules is going to be one of the international bestsellers, right? Oh, yeah, there's no question about it. Um, it's done 300,000 copies in English, and it's out in 26 different languages. The fourth edition comes out um, the first week of July, so um, there's a, a brand new edition coming out, uh, and I, I update it every two years. Um, hundreds and hundreds of other universities besides Bentley University use it. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's arguably the top marketing book in the world. And I think because you, you, you do make it easy for folks. Uh, you know, your teachings in the book, it's very conversational tone. You uh, integrate the strategy, strategic thinking with um, a pretty comprehensive view of the tools uh, out there. And I know that you're expanding that for the fourth edition to, to, yeah. to cover the new platforms. But I think that's why it's one of the first books I recommend to CIOs, IT leaders who... Uh, haven't yet sort of dipped a toe in the water. It's just a great place to to get started with your book. Um, but so for the last 10, 11 years, you've been out there uh, getting this message out there and working with marketing departments and leaders across the world. What's going on inside the, the CMO's heads these days that uh, the CIO should be knowing about? I mean, the marketing folks are using a yeah, lot of technology. Well, you know, it's, um, what's interesting is the the vast majority of CMOs, unfortunately... Uh, are still have most of their feats 
feet planted in the old the old way of doing things. You know, television commercials, magazine ads. If they're a B two B company, trade show booths. Um, uh, they still do a lot of traditional public relations, you know, pay agencies to pitch on their behalf. So, um, you know, as much as as much as we've come along in this revolution, and I, by the way, believe that the revolution we're going in right now, going through right now as communicators is the most important revolution in human history. Hmm. I think I think this revolution of people being able to right now, um, that is the most fundamental and most important communication revolution humans have ever had. And, and I look back, 550 years ago was the second, and that was the invention of the printing press. When the printing press was invented 550 years ago, it brought humanity out of the Middle Ages because people no longer had to rely on their religious leaders for the truth. And, um, and, and it brought on the Renaissance. And we're in the same kind of period today. And it's going to be a 20 or 30 year period. But now six, six billion out of seven billion people in the world have access to mobile phones. Um, that's more people than have access to toothbrushes or have access to um, working toilets. And so that is a huge fundamental change. And unfortunately, most CMOs and most CIOs don't understand how fundamentally important this revolution of communications is, and they're still doing traditional forms of marketing. Now, I'm not an advocate that says you should only do the things that I talk about, but I think that, um, the vast majority of companies should be spending more time with um, communicating the ways that people want to communicate and less time doing the traditional stuff. But, it, it, but your question gets to what it means for CIOs, and there's our incredible ramifications because marketing is now real time. Marketing is now about what's happening on your website right now this instant. What's happening in the, in the world of um, news right now? You know, what are the latest stories? What are the latest trends? Um, what's happening in social networks? So um, there needs to be a real-time environment built inside of companies' marketing departments. Much like the real-time environment I've worked in in the past in my career in a trading floor. If I were a CIO or a CMO, I would partner with my, my colleague um, where the CIO and the CMO get together, and I would quite literally create a trading floor-like environment for the marketing department. I would have feeds coming in from live news sources. I would have feeds coming in from live social media sources. You know, um, I would have uh, feeds coming in from the website. I would have feeds coming in from what the salespeople are selling. If you're running an e-commerce company, feeds coming in on what's selling right now. And I would then make, um, make a, a platform to be able to view those things together with internal data like client data, like prospect data, like journalist and um, blog data, uh, blog uh, blogger databases, and then I would have the tools that allowed me to manage that data. A lot of people throw around the term big data without actually knowing what it means. Okay. But the intersection of of big data with what CIOs and CMOs can put together it is truly a, a remarkable opportunity right now for people to take advantage of, because all of a sudden, let's say. Um, there's a weather event um, in, in your local community, and, um, and, and you can then adjust what products are offered on your homepage as a result of that because you know that there's going to be a bigger demand for, say, generators at Home Depot than there is um, for something else. Yet so few companies think that way because the marketing people are marketing campaigns and TV commercials for next quarter. So, once you know what you know, that is a good solution. But what you talked about before is not everybody understands. How do we begin to understand and learn, dip a toe in the water, and start to see the, get a sense of the profound level of change you're talking about? I think that, um, that the nature of marketing is changing such that you need people in the organization, I would advocate all the way up to the top, but you need people in the organization who truly understand this new world. And you need to rethink who the right people are to be staffing um, your marketing department. And, you know, it used to be 
that marketing departments were best staffed with people who were, you know, um, versed in the creative arts. You know, they, they were designers, they were writers. Yep. Uh, and by writers, I mean copywriters, people who could write ad copy. They were um, people who could des develop campaigns. Note the war metaphor, by the way. Campaign. Yeah. Um, the people who I believe need to, uh, need to be in marketing departments now are people who truly understand technology and also people who know how to tell a story. And by that, I mean journalists. Um, I, if, I were hiring, if I were at a marketing department today, Rather than copywriters, people who are good at creating advertising copy, I would hire journalists, um, hmm. former print reporters, former magazine reporters, former television journalists, and have them be part of the team that can help me to create content. And I would have people on the team who truly understand data, like mathematician, um, econometrics style quant people who can truly understand data that they can be able to crunch to be able to understand um, what we should be marketing today based on what's happening in the world today. But like I said, um, uh, there, there are very few organizations that are doing that. I think a good starting point is that the CMO needs to understand the tools of real-time communications. They need to jump on Twitter just to see what it's like. They, if they're not doing it already, they should probably try from a couple of YouTube videos just to do it and get going and see what's going, see what's going on, or at the very least understand what the people on their team are doing around those areas. Yeah, and I would say the same for CIOs and IT leaders to, to jump on, even though it's less obvious, but to start a, to get a sense of the new world order, start using the tools. And, and what just what you were talking about a minute ago is where I see the opportunity for a lot of um, collaboration, because we do have scientific thinking, methodical, uh, you know, very uh, sort of data-driven people on the IT side that could really lend a yeah. hand, but we have a, we have a gap as well in understanding uh, some of the marketing pieces. Yeah, I think that's right. Hey, um, one of the other things I want to dig into since, uh, since I had your time here was to talk about uh, a little bit about public speaking. Uh, you know, yeah. any, anybody who's going to be a CIO, an IT leader, a leader of any sort, uh, I, could have, I could be convinced of all this stuff and try and bring it uh, into my organization, but I need to be able to make presentations, I need to be able to, uh, to speak. Um, very important skills. It's something you've written about quite a bit and you've shared so much behind the scenes stuff that's been so cool to learn from somebody who's a pro at the game. Um, you've even uh, talked about uh, you know, using a professional coach, just like a professional athlete would use a, a coach. You're a professional yep. speaker, you use a yep. coach. Uh, I was thinking maybe you could give us some of your uh, advice on uh, speaking. Yeah, so right, I, I do use a coach. I've been speaking for 25 years. I've been speaking full time for about seven years, and I still work with a speaker coach. Um, it's, uh, I'm always trying to improve my game. Um, so it's an art and a science. Um, you can learn it. It takes a lot of practice. Um, it, most people um, do not rehearse. So the, mm. biggest, the biggest thing that I would recommend and that I would suggest is that if you've got an important speech to give, um, you've got to rehearse it. Number one, you have to tell stories. You have to um, create um, something which is interesting to people. And you have to understand who your audience is and create those stories for them. Um, then you have to rehearse to the point where you truly understand your material um, very, very comfortably. Uh, you need to understand also um, the technology you're going to be using uh, hmm. for the speech. You know, if you're just going to stand up and speak, maybe there's no technology involved. But, you know, if you're going to be giving a big presentation in a room that you've never been in, well, you need to get to the room early and use the technology and test it out. Um, but the biggest thing is rehearsal. And, you know, most, most people, when they're going to give a speech, you know, they write the speech, maybe they write it in PowerPoint, they look through their slides a couple of times, they say, I'm a pretty smart guy, I know material, I can just wing it. Well, you can't. It won't be any good. Um, and, um, and I think you've just got to really just internalize that material. Um, I am a huge believer in uh, the Toastmasters program. Mm. Um, I, um, when I first started speaking 25 years ago, I started doing Toastmasters. It's a uh, it's an organization devoted to helping people learn how to speak in public. And um, it meets, uh, depending on the local brand, uh, local chapter, you typically would meet once a month. 
and most people have a, an opportunity to speak for at least a minute or two at each meeting. Um, and then over the course of a couple of years, you get much very, very boring speeches. And I did that for every month for about five years. Um, and I got reasonably, I, I look back at it now and know that I stunk, but I got reasonably comfortable with it. And then I always continued my education from, from that point to the point now where um, I feel very, very good on stage and, and I, um, I, and I really enjoy it. And, and, and I'm now at the point where it's one of the most comfortable places hmm. in the world for me. I'm more comfortable on a stage speaking to a thousand people than I am uh, in a room with four people. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, what I like is, uh, is everything you just shared, you've shared in a lot of detail in your blog posts and all that. And yeah. it's just really great to see the behind the scenes. Like, what do you mean by practice? And you write down, you know, you, you take us through the story of developing your TEDx talk, for instance, in a recent blog post, and you really go through in detail. And that's what it's like. And that's what it takes to get to that, that level. Yeah, yeah. And I, um, if anyone wants to learn a little bit more on my blog, um, just Google my name, David Meerman Scott, you'll find my blog. Um, on the right hand side of the blog, I've got my, the categories of the blog posts that I've done. There's a button for public speaking. If you click that, you can see some of the, the posts I've done about public speaking. Um, I did one yesterday, as a matter of fact, about what public speakers can learn from Mick Jagger. Yeah. <laughs> because I caught the Mick Jagger, uh, called, caught the Rolling Stones show in Boston. And um, I actually went with my speaker coach. His name is Nick Morgan. And Nick and I went to the Stones and we watched uh, Mick Jagger in action. And then we wrote a joint, a joint blog post, um, which we posted. Uh, which a lot of people commented and tweeted about that blog post uh, because if you look at Mick, what Mick Jagger does, you know, how does he hold an audience? How does he work the room? How does he work the stage? How does he work with his technology? Um, how does he develop an emotional bond with the audience? Every single one of those are tools and techniques that public speakers can use. And frankly, I'm a huge music fan. I've seen um, well over 500 uh, live rock shows uh, and I, I've learn the now I learn, tend to learn more about public speaking from watching a rock band perform than I do about watching other public speakers perform because I think we can there's just so much cross pollination interesting and I think that's a that's a that's a challenging area for those of us in IT we tend to be a little bit more introverted so yeah. you know to to think of the Mick Jagger persona and trying to 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 adopt that and learn from that is a little bit nerve-wracking for some of us but, in, but, in the you, IT but world you know what you, you, I am too I'm um um I, I'm very, I ha, I've, I've gotten over it, but, uh, you know, as a kid, I was very, very shy. And, um, you know, you, you, if you saw me speak, you'd never, you would never think that. But like many actors or musicians or public speakers, um, I think the, the stage can, um, the stage can really be a way to break out of it. And it does take time. I mean, it's not going to be the first time you do it as that's going to happen, but you know, it, it does take time. All right. Now, we're going to wrap in a minute here, but oh, you said something earlier that I just want to get a quick piece of advice on about the speaking, which was telling a story. Again, yeah. in, in IT, we're very data-driven. We're very analytical. And if you ever see an IT person speak, the default scenario is lots of data and bullet points and all that. How do you find the story in there? Well, the story is how do people use the data? Why, why is that data important? You know, so um, if somebody says, you know, there's 486,000 hits on our website this year, um, what does that mean? For, you know, and, and that means for marketing that we need to have 28 new servers, which is going to cost this amount of money. You know, whatever it is, you say, uh, you change that around into stories. You say that um, uh, a Katia from Estonia was trying to buy some umbrellas on our site. And when she got on, um, um, the, uh, the wait time was 10 seconds to get the, to, to load the new page for the umbrellas that she wanted. And she didn't wait that long. And she left and she went to Amazon. And we know that she did that because she filled out a form on our site. Um, so then we need service. So you did it by telling a story rather than presenting data. Perfect. That's awesome. That's great. Um, any last thoughts on, uh, you know, when you think of CIOs, IT leaders, I know it's not your regular circle, but just us in the tech world, any uh, bit of advice that comes to mind? Um, like, I think the way you, you let off the first question is really interesting, and that is that... Um, the world of marketing is absolutely changing, and there's no question about it. It is much, much, much more technology-driven than it is than, than it has ever been. Marketing was primarily a creative discipline for a very long time. It's now very much a technology discipline, and it's very much a data discipline. 
And I think there's just huge opportunities. And this is a theme you've talked about many times, Tom, but I actually absolutely agree with you. There's huge opportunities for CIOs and others uh, who understand technology to partner with CMOs and others who understand marketing to just create an amazing marketing machine within companies. And, and we need you to do that. That's great. David, thanks so much. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Okay, take care.